Hello, my name is Matt Triano, and this is my second posting under my blogger name of Mr. T in room 103. And I chose the name because that's my room, and my name is Mr. Triano, or Mr. T, as the kids call me. I just thought it was a nice way of, of saying it. Uh, so I'm responding to four prompts uh, that Mrs. Logan has put up for us this week. Uh, the first prompt she wanted us to answer was, knowing where you stand personally, how can you plan uh, to incorporate more technology into your classroom, future classroom, so for me, uh, my upcoming school year in the fall of 2019, and to increase my level of technological engagement? And as I was just going through the question and thinking about how I would answer it, to be honest, it's like, so when I, when I took the class on this 21st century on you know technology and education, I was I'm hoping as we continue that will be given um, just more so apps, uh, other you know educational technologies that I've never heard of, because I know from experience that a single um, new technology that you've never heard of, uh, and a whole bunch of other teachers may be using it, but your ignorance of a certain thing may limit you in what you can do. And the moment it opens up your eyes, you're like, wow, I didn't even know this existed. Um, so one thing I would love is just, I guess even on my own, is just always looking to research and know what are the latest trends, what are the latest um, gadgets, what are the latest programs, uh, what, are the latest, what are other teachers doing around the United States in their classrooms that are working well for them. So I think one of the first things that I hope to do personally uh, in incorporating technology in the classroom is just, first of all, it sounds simple, but just being open uh, to new things. I think it's one of the first things you need to do as a teacher. You need to be okay with someone critiquing you in the first place, especially if it's a, someone that you can trust that can critique you for the goal of not just to say you're doing bad, because we're hoping if you're in the classroom you're already a great teacher. That's why you're there. The goal is not to just diminish you, but in order to help you. So I hope that I am critiqued in my classroom and someone can even say, hey, here's another way you can do it, or here's uh, know, something you've never even tried. So for example, one of my weaknesses or something I'd like to be strengthened in in the upcoming school year is using the use of Google Classroom. I've barely used it. I kind of use it, but I've never created the system step-by-step -step of how to do it. It's kind of like I'm going in blind. I make it up as I go along. Uh, honestly, even just using the Cairn University courses has helped me to have a better perception of how I might run a Google Classroom. So that's one way I know that it's helped me. The second question uh, that asks is, is it about the tools you have at your disposal or the way you use the tools? And I have to say straight up, it is not about the tool, it is about how you use it. I've seen plenty of teachers use tools haphazardly and it looks great. So it's great when you can say, oh, look at, all the, look at the STEM uh, program that we're doing. <clears throat> Look at uh, this new program I have to show the students. The program can be great, the gadget can be amazing, but if you don't know how to implement it in the classroom, then of what use is it actually? I, I've walked into certain classrooms, I look at it, and I'm like, what's going on in this room? Because it's more about the technology and less about the learning. And you have to find that balance. And I think particularly it's with new teachers or with older teachers that are trying out technology for the first time. And first of all, none of us have it right. None of us are perfect. We're all entering into this new realm of technology and learning how to better use it. Uh, so I, another thing is we have to be a little more understanding of each other uh, and be quick to collaborate together and, and to help each other to do better. But I do believe it's ultimately more important to be about how we use our techniques and our craft, our expertise, and then incorporating technology into it. I think some another danger of that would be to be aware. Of, don't just do, don't be too quick to, to give in to the students for technology. Make sure that you have a firm grasp on it, so, and that you're able to make it about the learning and not just about using the technology. The third question says, "What level of technological engagement do you hope to promote in your classroom?" Uh, like I said, this upcoming school year, I'm hoping uh, to really dive into understanding Google Classroom and how to incorporate it in a much more just professional way. It, when I look at it, I look at it, I'm like, this looks like I'm just not satisfied with my work. And it really comes back to my lack of understanding or, or ignorance. I don't know what a lot of the tools are. I don't know how to use them. I don't know how to structure it. 
Um, so I, I didn't grow up in it, so I don't know. So it's kind of random for me, and this is, this is my last school year was the first time I tried using it, and I'm slowly learning, but I feel more confident, honestly, for the upcoming school year, just on seeing a online class. I believe I can learn a lot from it in terms of now implementing a little bit of that idea into Google Classroom for my own uh, 12th grade students. And lastly, from the biblical, from a biblical standpoint, on a way that I hope to model for my students um, the use of technolo technology, engagement, and its use. Um, while for me, I'm all about technology in the classroom, I think it's great. I think we shouldn't run from it. We should be all about promoting it, because that's what the students are walking into in their future. Even if we didn't grow up with it ourselves, it is the new world, and it's something we need to get on board with. However, we can't allow technology to usurp the learning in the classroom. Uh, there's been a huge movement in post, something called postmodernism, which I'm not going to bore you with. I find it fascinating. It's this idea behind that every student's right. It's about the learning process is about the process and not about the content. It's sort of like everyone wins, everyone's right. As long as you look like you did the assignment in a right way, you get credit. And it, it just shows you we're going more and more catering towards that kind of concept. And so while I'm all for the technology and I'm for students learning and processing information, it in the end has to always come back to the content. The PowerPoint should never be the lesson. It should be the supplement to the lesson that encourages and motivates and engages your student, but isn't the lesson itself. As I said in another uh, post, I had a teacher that was all she did. She would just post something on PowerPoint. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even fancy, it was just random words, and we sat there. There was no engagement with the teacher, she sat there. She knew she was going to get paid well, regardless of how well she did. Um, so I think it's very important that uh, we really connect those students back to the content of the lesson. And I believe it's a biblical stamp, I think it's, it is biblical, uh, that we are demonstrating that kind of engagement for the students. Um, do how do we use that technology? The students are going to see how we use it. Do we use it haphazardly, or are we using it with purpose? We're showing them how to use it. Um, even just uh, the amount of time, because students, let's just say from their perspective, technology, they're going to think they're cell phones um, and what they're using for social media. There's so much more technology beyond that, and I want to model for the students a more appropriate and larger global sense of what they can use technology for and that they can ultimately use it for themselves to better their education, uh, to better their futures, and I hope to instill that in every one of my students. So thank you for listening uh, to this blog, and I continue to want to learn and grow with you uh, through this class. Thank you.